Okay, it looks like we're ready to go, Rufia. So let me introduce myself and, um, and you. I'm Sarah Colomello. I'm the PR manager for Nuvans Health. And I have the pleasure of working with Rufia Payman. She's one of my favorite people. Um, she is a certified dietitian and nutritionist, and she provides one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling at Northern Duchess Hospital in Rhinebeck. Her goal is helping people love the food that loves them back. As a su supervisor of outpatient nutrition education, she leads groups for bariatric surgery support, weight loss, diabetes prevention, and childhood obesity. Her next um, diabetes prevention program is April 5th. It's for people who have prediabetes, and if that's something that interests you, um, hit me up in the chat and I'll send you some information on that. Um, what you might not know about Rafia is that her passion is really talking to the community about being healthier, and she rarely turns down an opportunity to tell people that food is medicine and junk food is poison. Um, this is Food is Medicine, Shed Your Quarantine 15. So we're gonna hear from Rufia about how to get back on track and um, her advice for just how to eat healthy throughout your day. I'm gonna hold the questions. You can ask questions in the Q&A or chat. Um, I'm going to, to jump in and share them with Rufia or um, if they're a little off subject, I'll save them for the end. But please, she loves to answer questions and this is meant as a dialogue. Um, so Rufia, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you all and thank you, Sarah, um, for hosting this program. It's good to be with you all. Um, I know we all have been through a lot during past year. It's been really difficult for everyone especially for those of you who are working from home, those of you who have children, and those of you who are on real lockdown. Um, I was telling Sarah that uh, I just um, did some research from CDC during um, past year, during COVID, 71 million Americans have gained weight, 71 million. So please don't feel bad. And that's 52% of America has gained weight. The most important thing is self-love. So stop the negative talk, uh, that self-talk, that you've gained weight, you don't look the way you look, you don't like the way your clothes look, just be proud of yourself that you survived and you made it to March 10th of 2021. But it is true, you are what you eat. Um, how you fuel your body, truly impacts not only your physical well-being, but also your emotional well-being and your energy level. I know for a lot of us, it's like we want immediate, we are a culture of immediate satisfaction, right? Why can't I take a pill to fix it? Or why can't I just starve myself? Or why can't I go on keto diet? Or intermittent fasting? Or just eat 500 calories a day? Well, it's not safe. It works, but temporarily. And it's not realistic. I truly believe it's for you to make a kind plan for yourself and believing up here that your food is your medicine and start slow. If you're not eating three meals a day, after this, your goal should be start eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you're not drinking enough water, I don't want you to start drinking four liters of water a day. 
just be kind. Please be kind to yourself. Say, you know what? I'm going to add maybe two extra glasses of water or herbal tea to my day. That is easy you can do. If you're not walking, if you're not exercising, it doesn't have to be, oh my God, I can't, which I understand people, a lot of people can't go to the gym. Just say to yourself, you know, even during winter, during icy time, you can walk in your place, in your house, in your apartment, inside, time yourself five minutes, four times a day, or five times a day. Take, start taking small, realistic, small steps. But if you're fortunate enough that you can go outside, then I really encourage you. I'm so happy today is sunny, warm, and bright. So start today and Sunday, it's daylight saving time. So that's even better. So you have the time. Don't make real unrealistic goals. Like I'm going to walk five miles a day. I'm going to walk three miles a day. No, I'm going to see if I can walk 15 minutes, maybe twice a day. Just go outside. You don't need to run. You don't have to do crazy stuff just start slow it's really important you do it every single day every single day if it's adding water you a glass of water extra glass of water it has to be every single day for it to be a habit because it's all about a lifestyle change it's not about gimmick I don't believe in that. Works temporarily. Now, we all have crazy lives, busy lives. Those of you who have children, oh my God, you guys are amazing. You are teachers, your parents, your coach, you're their friends. So I get it, it's hard. You don't have to be a culinary graduate to make healthy food. Just planning is everything. I always tell people, you could really um, eat healthy if you have a plan. You have to have a plan. You have to have a list to go food shopping. You actually have to write it down. What I think it's going to work if you plan what you're going to have for the week, you save money. Um, you also being good to yourself so you don't stress out. So write a list what you need for your kitchen <laughs> and go through your kitchen cabinet. Truly, if you see things that are not healthy, and you know there are your triggers, donate it to food pantry. Give it to someone else. Um, so start there. And then say, okay, what am I going to have for breakfast the next five days or the next seven days, right? It is important you include protein, a high fiber grain, but we all have portion distortion, right? So high fiber grain, if it's bread, doesn't mean if it's 15 grain bread, it's healthy, no. So simple thing, read the ingredient, no corn syrup, no high fructose, no enriched flour, and your bread, should not have more than 80 calories. And if it does, then you eat only one slice and at least three grams of fiber, right? Cereal, that's the thing I go crazy. All these cereals that you see advertised as healthy, they're all poison. Poison, poison, poison. 
So you want to be really careful with cereal. A cereal that has nuts in it, fruit in it, says high in antioxidant, high in omega-3 is a lie. Lie, lie, lie. You buy a cereal that is whole grain, no enriched flour, no more than four grams of sugar per serving. You add your own fruit, fresh or frozen, and you add your own nuts. Never, ever, please, even if it says organic cereal, don't do that to yourself. You know what I get really upset about? Raisin bran. I go crazy if I see the ad on TV. I just lose my mind. I start yelling and screaming. Raisin bran is worse than eating donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. So please be kind to yourself. Well, of course, oatmeal, plain oatmeal, not all these flavored oatmeals, no good. If you're eating oatmeal, has to be plain, then you can flavor it uh, with vanilla extract, put berries in it, blueberries. If you Google what, is, what food is good for brain health, blueberries, number one, frozen, as good as fresh, any kind of berries that you like. You can add nuts, walnuts, which is so heart healthy, high in protein, high in magnesium. Magnesium is so good for stress and fiber and omega-3. So you can add nuts to your oatmeal. That makes a perfect breakfast. Egg, poor eggs got bad rap, right? Everybody's scared of eggs. Excellent source of protein for breakfast, but it should be from chickens that are cage-free, no hormone, no antibiotic. You can do seven eggs a week as your protein yolk. Now, those of you who have high cholesterol, really high cholesterol, maybe you want to limit it to four yolks a week, the rest, egg white, egg white, excellent source of protein. You also need some yolk in your diet because yolk has choline, which is an amino acid, which is really important for your brain health. So don't be scared of eggs. When it comes to dairy, I have to be honest and say to you guys, if you're suffering from arthritis really bad, if you have any kind of autoimmune disease, the less dairy you eat, the better off you are. Now, if you're concerned about calcium, you get calcium from leafy green, from almonds, from salmon, from tuna, from sardines, um, spinach, Swiss chard, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, so you don't have to be worried about that. So dairy has to be low fat. I know there was a whole thing about how full fat dairy, it's better. No, animal fat causes plaque, causes inflammation in the body. So you are welcome to use as your protein for breakfast, low fat cottage cheese, low part skin bricotta cheese. Uh, you can use Greek yogurt, low fat, and um, there are Greek yogurts like Siggy is good, Chobani is good. Now they have also, um, Chobani has the yogurt, which I recommend to my diabetic patients, if they like, has only two grams of sugar with natural fruit in it. Um, natural almond butter, natural peanut butter, excellent source of protein. Uh, pumpkin seeds, oh my God, should be sold as gold, right? Um, high in magnesium, high in zinc, high in vitamin E, high in selenium, high in protein, a quarter a cup. Again, including myself, the more is better. You know, this is how we grew up. 
portion is important. Nuts are wonderful for you, but they're high in calorie. They have healthy fat. Don't get scared when you look at the fat amount in nuts. There are healthy fats, right? We have unhealthy fat, like the fat from bacon, from mayonnaise, from sausage, from cocots, um, and red meat, and fatty part, and fried food. Then we have healthy fat, like nuts and seeds, avocados, salmon, sardine, olive, olive oil. So, but portion is important. So for breakfast, a combination of protein and healthy grain, whether it's oatmeal, plain Cheerios. Cheerios, thankfully, they're gluten-free, plain, not the honey, not Cheerio. The plain Cheerio and respect the portion and adding any kind of berries to your breakfast. It is what I am finding out. Um, we've been doing the diabetes prevention program um, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, since 2014, September 2014. Okay. So, um, so I'm learning through our attendees that um, really eating three meals, three snacks a day is so simple. Life is hard. Why should I want your eating be hard? Really, life is hard enough. So simple. Three meals, three snacks a day. The snacks, it's not about cookies and cakes at three o'clock, um, chocolate and candy. It's the healthy snack. So when you eat your breakfast, whatever time it is, ideally, I tell all my patients, within an hour that you wake up, if you have a $200,000 car, if you don't put fuel in it, or if it's electric, you don't charge it, you can't run it. So your body is like a machine, right? So you want to fuel it within an hour that you wake up. And please, before I forget, um, do not buy smoothies from supermarkets or from whatever, smoothie stands. They're loaded with sugar. You're welcome to make your own smoothies with leafy green, half a Granny Smith apple, some berries, plain low-fat yogurt if you like, or low-fat milk, or almond milk, or um, cashew milk if you like. But, no fruit juice in it. I have an issue with fruit juice. All the pediatrician now tell uh, their parents no juice. So please, no juice, whole fruit, but no juice in your smoothies. So that could be used for your breakfast. Uh, for your snack, hummus is a great snack, right? Um, Low-fat cheese, yogurt, cottage cheese. When it comes to granola bars, it is so important you really, really be careful. Um, they're marked as healthy. Look at the grams of sugar in them. You don't want your granola bars to have more than maximum six grams of sugar. And also, Minimum amount of protein should be six grams. So you pick up, I use kind bar as an example. There are kind bars that have only two grams of protein in them and 13 grams of sugar. That's not healthy. So you really have to be careful, read the ingredient. The purpose of you eating granola bar is to get nutrients. and. The other thing is, you know, um, I'm old enough, I can share this with you. For years, we told people, count calories, right? We never focused about nutrient-dense food. Ask yourself, what is this food doing for me? It's all about self-love. 
if you love yourself, you want to fuel your body with good things. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're eating, I apologize. If you're eating a Danish for breakfast, what is that Danish going to do for you? Or a bagel. <coughs> or a, what, a hard roll with bacon and eggs. Immediate satisfaction, long-term pain. So you need to ask yourself, what am I going to eat that's going to fuel my body and my mind, right? <laughs> and then- Rafia, tell us how many um, slices of bread a bagel is again. A bagel shop near us in Kingston, um, my clients brought it in, nine to 10 slices of bread. <coughs> a good, big, tasty New York bagel, eight to nine slices of bread. So you feel great eating it. An hour later, you crash. You can't focus. You blame your work, you know, your coworkers, your, all this, your children, or whatever, you know, <coughs> or your age has nothing to do with that. Can you, can I jump in and ask what your opinion is of Kashi Golin cereals? Any thoughts on if that's a good option? Well, Kashi Golin, if it has fruit in it, no good. If it has, if it has only six grams of sugar, uh, the plain Golin has 10 grams of protein, I believe and it's high in fiber, I think it's good. But as long as, read the portion size uh, back of the box, and the, sure, you can have that. There is no problem with that. <coughs> but if you have IBS, I wouldn't recommend that. Irritable bowel, IBS means irritable bowel. So it is important you ask yourself, every morning that you wake up, you look yourself in the mirror and say, I love myself, I'm grateful, I'm alive, I can take a shower, I can take care of myself, I, right? Positive thoughts, I can drive. So what can I do to improve the quality of my life? How you fuel your body is number one. How you manage stress is number two. Number three, how much you move. Number four, faith. So it is important, but if you eat junk, if you start your day with bagel and butter, you're going to crash. You're going to feel miserable. Be kind to yourself. Two and a half hours after your breakfast, no later than three hours, do a mid-morning snack. Vegetables are your best friend. Believe me, you learn to love the vegetable. Be brave. Celery, carrots, different color peppers, cucumbers, anise or fennel, broccoli, cauliflower, mid-morning, with hummus or with cottage cheese, 2% or 1% cottage cheese. If you have perfect cholesterol, you could do 4% cottage cheese, half cup. With vegetable, you could use herbs to flavor your cottage cheese, like basil, which is antidepressant, oregano, which is antiviral, right? Your cottage cheese then looks exotic, right? So you could have that big vegetable or a quarter cup of nuts for a snack or one of the better bars for a snack. When it comes to lunch, if you're going to work, pack your lunch. I urge you to pack your lunch. Protein, 
could be a cup of beans, any kind of beans, black beans, kidney beans, white beans, um, lentils, rinse chickpeas, rinse it a few times to get rid of the salt. Add, you could buy pre-washed spring mix, mix, right? It's pre-washed, all the supermarkets carry them. So you put a cup of beans, some grape tomato, some baby carrots, whatever vegetable you have, that is going to be your perfect lunch. And if you need, you have to chew or you want that carbs, you could do a few healthy crackers. Um, I like Blue Diamond makes uh, nothing, they're gluten free. Nothing crackers, they come in many different flavors. Um, they're great if you have a few of those with your lunch. That's a great lunch. Some of you like hot lunch. You could use your um, slow cooker, make vegetarian chili or turkey chili or ground chicken or make a stew. You can take that to work or have it a cup of that for lunch at home. Or you could add uh, to your salad, tuna, uh, sardines, turkey slices, chicken slices. Or my favorite, my own favorite, is half an avocado with hummus, lettuce, tomato, you know, and great whole grain slice of open face sandwich, a slice of whole grain bread, that makes a great lunch, right? So, and then some of you are so stressed, you don't have time to have lunch. You know what? Doesn't have to be fancy hummus with some cut up raw vegetable or one of your smoothies that you could have for lunch, but you have to have lunch. Believe me, starving yourself doesn't work. It does not work. Then after lunch, all of us, every person on the planet, our blood sugar naturally drops around three o'clock. That's why mid-afternoon we all crave sweets, right? That's when you have your beautiful apple. We live in the most wonderful part of the country or the world, and we have uh, beautiful fruits, apples, local fruit as we go into spring, or it could be, a, people are scared of eating banana. I always laugh. A banana is full of potassium, magnesium, fiber with protein. Always eat fruit with protein. Why? Fruit has natural sugar. When you pair it with protein, Protein slows down the breakdown of sugar. Peanut butter, natural peanut butter with an apple or banana, nuts with fruit, or cottage cheese with berries. So any kind of fruit you like, or a cup of pineapple. Um, different food offer different nutrients. Doesn't have to be complicated. You could buy pre-packed 100 calorie um, nuts, you know, so it gives you portion control, and an apple or a pear or an orange. So it is important in place of eating cookies and cakes and pies, three o'clock in the afternoon, you have your fruit, which is natural sugar, pair it with protein. When it comes to dinner, it's hard. If you get home late, um, if you don't want, you're too tired, you don't want to cook, I urge you, be kind to yourself, prep, plan on your day off. You're worth it. Your health is worth it. Remember, food, you want food to be your medicine, not medicine your food. So on the weekend, prep, make yourself a simple as turkey chili or lean, very lean beef chili, grass fed if you can. Um, it is important you plan, You, I think of myself, 
I spend half of Sunday cutting and prepping. Do I get upset about it? But then I remind myself, yes, I'm doing it because I love myself. You know, I'm doing it for myself. So it is important. In the beginning, you're going to resist it. You're going to get upset. You're going to get angry. But really honest to God, Cutting the vegetable is therapeutic. Looking at all different color of vegetable is therapeutic. You know, we are very fortunate. We have fresh frozen vegetable. You could pop in your microwave. There's no excuse, right? And you drizzle some olive oil and balsamic vinegar on it, makes it delicious. If for some of you to say, oh my God, it's so boring, rice, cauliflower. But if you add some garlic, if you add some olive oil, some different kind of herbs, it's delicious. It's delicious, right? You could do that. Um, you could even, honestly, I've done it bake sweet potato in advance, all you do, warm it up, you know, it's easy. Um, and for some of you who you get home late, uh, you're stressed, you think of a stopping at McDonald's, please, please, I beg of you, do not go to fast food restaurant. Don't say it's cheap. Honestly, you pay for it with your help. Go home, eat a peanut butter sandwich. Go home, make yourself an arm. Go home, buy these low carb. I give you Joseph's low carb flatbread. Go home, make yourself a pizza yourself. Yourself. You know, put some cheese, some marinara sauce on it, some vegetable on it. You could cook yourself pizza. Do not eat fast food. You know, I pass fast food. I honestly, when I look at the cars, I get really sad. You don't want to do that to yourself. You're welcome to order out grilled chicken with salad or a piece of fish with vegetables, with brown rice, nothing white, by the way. No white rice. I grew up on white rice, but no white rice. You could do brown rice. You could do quinoa when it comes to grain, farro, millet, right? Whole grain pasta or chickpea pasta or lentil pasta. But portion, portion, portion. We all have, including myself, portion distortion. A cup of cooked grain, half of your plate should be vegetable. Unfortunately, corn and peas does not count as your vegetable, counts as your starch. Green beans, zucchini, tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, red cabbage is potent with nutrients. It's the best thing for you. Um, all of these wonderful vegetables. So you can saute them, you can grill them, you can steam them, you can roast them. The more vegetable you, nothing on this planet protects you against diseases except vegetables. Vegetables are your best friends. Um, if you don't like them, be creative. Make a deal with yourself. Every week you try one new vegetable and you just flavor it with different herbs, different spices. And the best thing is, if you really like, you look at broccoli and say, I don't know whether I want to eat it or not, put a teaspoon of Parmesan cheese on it. Believe me, you will eat it then. So vegetables are your best friend. When it comes to protein for dinner, lean, lean protein. Chicken, fish, shellfish. If you have very high cholesterol, you want to limit shellfish to once a week. Uh, beef to once a week. Uh, pork, pork tenderloin is the other white meat. Pork chop, if you trim the fat, is the other white meat. 
do I want everyone on the planet to eat vegetarian? Of course, but that's my choice. But it's not realistic and it's not for everyone. So I urge you to try to eat plant-based once a week, if you can, please. Use the beans as your protein source. And you're welcome to use Sorry, it's nice to the by mug, but my allergies are acting up. Um, you're welcome to use canned beans, but just make sure you rinse it really well. And you could buy dry beans, very inexpensive. You soak it overnight. You can cook it in your slow cooker. The, uh, what I do with dry beans, I soak it overnight. I cook it the next day. Then, like I cook French lentil a lot. So I have it in the refrigerator. Then I saute different kind of vegetable, different uh, sauces. Then I add that as protein to my vegetable or to your salad. So you, that is you save money and you know exactly how you prepare it. Um, but protein as dinner is really important. Um, and vegetable. If you're trying to get rid of that 15 pounds, I have to be honest with you. Get rid of the grain. Uh, for the first month, see if you can go without grain. Even if you try not to have grain um, every other day. Um, eat more vegetable. Instead of potato, which is starchy food, do rice cauliflower. Instead of pasta, do zucchini noodle. Um, you could even, now that the weather is nice, grill, uh, make um, cabbage steaks or cauliflower steaks, marinate it with balsamic vinegar, olive oil, different kind of herbs, and you can put it on the grill. Um, for the first month, um, maybe every other day, see if for breakfast, make yourself an omelet, add loads of vegetable to it. Vegetables are amazing source of fiber, and fiber fills you up, it slows down the breakdown of sugar, right? At night, I know everybody is stressed, wants to snack. Popcorns, everybody, I get asked about popcorn. If you have diverticulitis and your GI, your gastroenterologist told you, you have to be careful. I'm very old fashioned. I would say stay away from popcorn. The nuts, on the other hand, you can chew it really fine. So that's okay. Popcorn is something if you suffer from that, you want to stay away from. But otherwise, three cups of pop popcorn with a quarter cup of nuts or a slice of low fat cheese makes a great night snack. And I have to be realistic. There are people who are used to eating potato chips with their lunch. And I realized, you know, instead of saying, oh my God, how could you do that? No, I would say, okay, if you're willing to do a salad and protein, you could buy baked blue corn chips and have 10 or 12 corn chips would put in your salad. So it gives you the crunch. No dried fruit, please. Those of you who are pre-diabetic, those of you who are trying to lose weight. You know, I go crazy when I see cranberry in people's salad. A sugar-coated cranberry is sugar. So don't do that instead. Put berries in your salad. Cut up strawberries in your salad. Um, for a snack at night, um, those of you who comforted yourself with the ice cream, limit yourself during the pandemic once a week. And if you don't have kids at home, don't buy it. Don't bring it to the house. Because if out of sight, out of mind. So what you can do even with the kids, take them out, take them out once a week, get them ice cream cone. So it's not in your freezer calling your name 11 o'clock at night. There are, I don't believe in sugar-free product. I think they're really harmful. 
Um, so what I would recommend is like Yasso Greek uh, frozen yogurt bar. Uh, one of those bars, if you really want ice cream, it's pretty good. Um, I like to talk about flaxseed and chia seed because they're so good for you. They're high in soluble fiber. Um, they lower cholesterol. They lower blood sugar. They're anti-inflammatory. So with flaxseed, you have to grind it. Um, if you're eating cereal or even for crunch to um, your salad, you can use one or two teaspoons. And with chia seeds, the same thing. They're high in protein, high in omega-3. Uh, you can add it to your salad. You could add it to your smoothie. You can add it to your oatmeal, to your yogurt. But also, you can make chia pudding, which is really good. Uh, with unsweetened vanilla almond milk, you can add blueberries and kind of berries to it. You let it sit in the refrigerator uh, for a few hours. You could have it um, as a snack. You could have it as a dessert. It's not for everyone. Actually, you could even have for breakfast chia pudding. It's really filling and it's good. So, and I recommend everyone who lives in Northeast, but please get a primary care health provider. Go see your primary care. Don't be scared. The hospitals are really the safest place to be. Um, go get your blood work. Make sure you take vitamin D. Make sure you eat nutrient-dense food to boost up your immune system. Remember, we all know you all read about gut health and brain health, right? So if you eat processed food, you are going to destroy the good bacteria in your gut, right? So you really want to eat nutrient-dense food to keep your gut healthy. And it is important you eat high-fiber vegetable. Five cups of vegetable a day. That should be your goal. Your goal should be by September, you all be eating five cups of vegetable a day. And you all will be walking. You can do this. 30 minutes, seven days a week. It could be in 10 minute increment. We all have 10 minutes that we could go take a walk. It's good, you become more productive. Believe me, you become more productive. Please be kind to yourself, go food shopping, clean your kitchen cabinet, uh, get rid of your drunk food. Any questions? Yes. Um, Fia, can you suggest some staples everyone should have in their pantry to help make healthy food tasty? Right. In the pantry, uh, basil, oregano, sage, rosemary, um, balsamic vinegar, olive oil. I believe in olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, the best is from California. So because of some craziness in Europe, now we know California olive oil is the best. Beans, canned beans, um, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, quinoa, and eggs always have um, eggs in your uh, refrigerator yogurt if you like yogurt in your refrigerator. I believe in cutting back on salt. Uh, we eat too much salt and salt is as bad as sugar and fat. <laughs> and so lemon juice, lime juice, especially lime juice takes the place of salt and herbs. Spices like turmeric, cumin, coriander, very good to add to your food to make your food tasty. And frozen vegetable in your freezer. 
Sophia, um, two questions about oils. So maybe you can talk briefly a minute about um, especially coconut oil and sunflower oil. So, okay, sunflower oil is great. Coconut oil, American Heart Association in 2017, they've done studies that coconut oil is beautiful for your hair, beautiful for your skin. I recommend everybody use it as a moisturizer, conditioner on your hair once a week, on your skin every day, but causes plaque, plaque in your arteries. Please do not use coconut oil. Use the best oil, olive oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, and um, canola oil. And of course, avocado oil, but unfortunately, I have to tell you, it broke my heart. I was listening to a program on NPR Sunday morning, maybe some of you listen, it's Mill Street Cafe, it's from 7 to 8, and I learned that all the avocado oil in United States, it's bad. It's not 100% avocado oil. So I got very upset because I used to recommend it to my clients and I used to use it. So no avocado oil. You're welcome to eat half avocado every day, but do not, the best diet on the planet, Mediterranean diet, go with olive oil. I would like to recommend to you all uh, to read a book, which is great, The Blue Zone Diet, uh, which uh, National Geographic has done research, places that people live to be over 100, perfect heart, perfect brain health, and it's their diet. Basically, it's Mediterranean diet. And also another book I would like you to read by Michael Moss, uh, salt, sugar, and fat. And um, there, during COVID, I was fortunate enough, I took many classes. Um, it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. I definitely, uh, he also has um, podcasts. Um, book, if you're traveling, you can listen in the car or walk your walks. Sophia, that first one was the Blue Zone Diet. Is that what you said? Yes, Blue Zone Cookbook and Blue Zone Diet. Great. Yes. Um, can you go into sweeteners? Every time I go to use white sugar, I tell myself, Rufia would say I'm giving myself cancer. Is that, <laughs> can you go over what um, we should sweeten our food with? Okay, if you're trying to sweeten, if you're overweight, if there is family history of cardiac disease, if there's family history of diabetes, I even say it, if you have family history of OCD um, and alcoholism, drug addiction, family history of that, you really want to limit the sugar because sugar is addictive. Sugar affects the part of the brain that cocaine and alcohol does. And white sugar is not good, it's refined. If you are really want to use sugar, coconut sugar is good, um, sugar in the raw, but only, only a teaspoon a day or use stevia or truvia or monk fruit. Speaking of alcohol, is there, what's the rule about alcohol and weight loss? Well, I get very upset when it comes to alcohol because I think the alcohol industry, which we know because the guy, the advisory committee for USDA, their recommendation was to say no alcohol, no sugar. But uh, the beer industry fought it so much in November so they removed that from 2021 to 2025 uh, food guideline. So my recommendation is no more than two drinks a week 
those of you who've been comforting yourself or have Zoom meeting with your friend with glass of wine, do water, 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 right? Please, empty calorie promotes breast cancer, uh, promotes all kind of cancer, diabetes. Did you know fatty liver? Did you know most trans liver transplant uh, is happening in United States is because of obesity, and diet, high and refined carbohydrate. So please be kind to yourself. Limit your alcohol to two drinks a week. Water, water is your best friend. How about flour? Is, um, is there a certain flour if you're baking? Uh, whole wheat flour is really, I'm a lousy baker. I shouldn't be allowed to bake. But if I can use whole wheat flour and it's fine, then use whole wheat, really good whole wheat flour. That was the last question in the chat. I mean, I'll give everybody an, another minute if they want to type in something we didn't go over. And I'll ask you, can you talk a little bit about B12? Because that you changed my life by recommending um, to look at the blood work and look at your, if you're in B12 range. B12 level, you're, right. Yeah. So I recommend to everyone, go see your primary care. Ask your primary, regardless of your age, ask your primary care to do your B12 level and your vitamin D level. B12 impacts your glucose metabolism, uh, your memory, and also stress, right? And your energy level. So many of us do not eat a diet high in B12. So you need to ask your primary care doctor to do your B12 level and your vitamin D level. So I read a lot of European research and studies that three or four years ago, British Medical Journal cited this research that the number of uh, our level of vitamin D that you know our protocol is, if your vitamin D level is 29 to 100, you're normal. The British study said all the fractured, you know, they're very high in osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. The fracture happens not because of low calcium, because of low vitamin D. For uh, and vitamin D protects you against diabetes, depression, uh, mental fog, and many other things, and your immune system. So your level should be 50. So you, when the nurse calls from your primary care office, you want to know what your level actually is because it could be 30 and they saw you're normal. So you really want to know what your level is. Now, when it comes to B12, most of us are low in B12. Is it because of our gut bacteria, because our diet? And let's be honest, our soil is not what it used to be. Our food gets travels from Chile, from California, from all over the country or all over the world. So it loses some nutrient. So B12, and for you to be in perfect, you know, energy zone, your B12 should be around 700. So when the test is done, the protocol for lab, if you're 210, you're normal. And if you're 1,000, you're normal. So you want to be around seven, 800 to have best energy. And it just, you feel so much better, so much better. So please, that's why it is important you go see your primary care doctor and have bl blood work done. One last question, Rafi, and then we'll wrap up. Um, can you talk about, you talked about whole wheat flour, but how does that compare to coconut flour? Uh, if I recommend for people who have severe arthritis, for people who have uh, MS, any kind of autoimmune, 
gluten-free, we know too much gluten causes inflammation. Um, coconut flour is good, almond flour is good, much better lower glycemic index. It doesn't impact your blood sugar the way the whole wheat flour, even organic whole wheat flour does. So it's much better to use the coconut flour, almond flour, chickpea flour, even lentil flour. You know, if you're a good cook, you can make your own bread or in recipes, sure. It's gluten-free and it's better, of course. Rufia, thank you so much. You've been oh, speaking to thank us. Thank you. Uh, please take care of your health. You are what you eat. Remember, you all can make one change a day. You're worth it. Be kind to yourself. Healthy eating is about self-love. Be kind to yourself. Thank you all for attending this program. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And we're going to record this and um, share it on our YouTube channel and social media channel. So if you miss something or you just want to refresh yourself a month or two from now, you're welcome to watch it. Rufia, like I said, does some public programs. Um, she does outpatient nutrition counseling. If you're interested in the pre-diabetes program, give her office a call. It's 871-3318. Um, and you can also email me. My, my name is Sarah Colomella, and I work at New Vance Health. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you all. Stay healthy.